Howdy everyone, Eric Allard here with Tilson Homes, Senior Vice President, part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family. So excited that you're joining us today for another installment of Tilson Live, Tilson Tuesday. We haven't decided what we're going to call it. We have people <laughs> that are already checking in, Dawn. But before yes. we get to them, I haven't introduced you yet. Stop that. They don't know who you are. Oh, sorry. So, so we've only done this almost 70 times, but I'm joined as I am every week. Steal my thunder. I'm joined as I am every week. By the one and only award-winning website designer <laughs> implementer uh one of the four finalists for marketing professional of the year by the texas association of builders a mother a marketing genius a fantastic mentor co-worker of mine this is don dancer how was that one that's a good one <laughs> hi everybody <laughs> everybody say hi to don all right so um, I, I was going to tell people to drop their comments, where they're building from, uh, I'm sorry, where they're watching from, where they're building, all of those things. Put them into the chat. We can't wait to see them. Uh, they don't need my instructions. As they don't. Point. They they seem to got you know everybody everybody's in it. John is in Kyle, Texas, uh, building a driftwood eventually. Yeah, John. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we are. Uh, Jesse says, "Happy T Tilson Tuesday." Thanks Happy for Tilson joining Tuesday. us again. Yeah. Uh, we have Will coming in from Klondike. Uh, and then we have David. He's very excited. We're going to show hey. his work, guys. David. David is the one that actually makes all of our videos and films everything wonderful that you that you see on our site. So we're very excited. This this one's going to be a little bit different. So we're excited to share some more of his content with you guys. Yeah, David discovered us. We were the best kept secret in the state of Texas until David came along. No one knew who we were, and then so now, <laughs> between David and of course Don's magic, now they know. Now they know. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. <laughs> you became an overnight sensation in just under 90 years. Very well done. There you go. It, it well had done. to happen eventually. Um, Peggy's coming in from McKinney. I uh, can't wait to see this beautiful house. We can't wait to share it with you. Yeah, <laughs> Sherry says we're amazing. All of you guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. We're glad you're here. And um, we had somebody who commented over the weekend that this is like the highlight of our week. And it just made me, it made my weekend, like totally made my day. Cause this definitely is the highlight of our week too. So we're glad that everybody enjoys it. Um, Donna is coming in from Plano. I hope to be in Marble Falls next year. We hope so too. We do. Um, Neil is coming in from Mansfield. Toller. We'll be building the San Jacinto and Toller. Awesome. Um, Peggy's building the Livingston B in Fannin County. About 30 days left. Awesome. We could do this right, for your you. house next. Yes. Kelsey, Thank write her name down. Here. This is great. Yeah. We got Tracy coming in from Henley. Um, Kimberly's in San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. Other people um, don't <laughs> David says he's excited about this live and he's, he's sorry to blow, the, blow, his, blow your cover, Eric, and make I everybody was incognito know for decades when you came along. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, guys, keep, oh, see that. I'll be there tomorrow, be in College Station. Howdy. Awesome. Um, looking forward to it. Might even meet up with my brother there and have dinner. Who knows? Maybe. Oh, awesome. I mean, Roush family built in San Felipe need camp near Cameron. Foundation is done and lumber was delivered today. Awesome. All right. Um, Jesse's in It does Wilco. happen. It does happen. There are this. Yes, it does. There will be foundations. <laughs> there will be construction. If you hang in there with us, we promise we'll make it happen. And make you happy. All right. Jesse's in Wilco building the Gillespie. Thinks she's done messing with the floor plan. Um, on to transferring the deed electricity and getting that well dug. All right. Yes. Let's put put the floor plan down so we can get going. Yes. Walk away. Walk, Walk away. away. Um, Gerana is coming in from Hello Days, uh, getting our plans to the Art Canyon building in Pipe Creek in December. Awesome. Thank you for calling it Pipe Creek, not Pipes Creek. Very well done. Thank you, Gerana. Thank you. <laughs> Oh. Um, Jabo just finished stakeout this morning near Natalia, Texas. Awesome. That's great yeah. to hear that. Um, we've got uh, Lauren from Arlington building a customized Gonzalez and Cleburne. Cleburne. All right. 
Um, Renee coming in from Central Texas. We got to be more specific, Renee. Where are you? Where? That is, yeah, that, hey, that's a big area. Only the hottest is. market in the United States of America. No big deal. She's Just being so. incognito, so no one can find her. I don't, I don't blame her. Yeah. Uh, Peggy's in Fort Worth. Learn something every time you go live. So do I. I learn yes. something from Eric every time we go live. Peggy, Peggy told us something very nice yesterday evening. I think it was Peggy that, that we built her house and then she sold it like four years later for like double what she paid for it. Oh, wow. Way to go, Peggy. Yay. Time to build another one. So, yes, the, um, for sure. All right. So, so we had a little bit different format today, folks. So bear with us because we're relying on technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Dawn's going to walk you through. We've got a little bit different. Uh, do we give them a sneak peek now or later about what's on the website? Or should they hang to the end? They got to hang to the they end. Hang. They should hang. We got to yeah. hang to the end. We've got we've got kind of a surprise on the website. Um, but uh, yeah, so so anyway, Don's going to lay out a format real quick because we're doing it a little bit different today because because of the amazing video footage that we have. Yes. So if technology cooperates, everybody cross your fingers, cross your toes for us. It's it's all going to work out. But we have a special treat. So we're looking at the Hoover family's Breckenridge um, in Tarrant County. And because of the magic of David and Kelsey, who we talk about on our marketing team, we actually have Mrs. Hoover um, giving you guys the tour via video. Um, so we're going to let her kind of show off her house. And then Eric and I will, will chime in, you know, as we go room by room to kind of talk in a little bit more detail. But we just wanted to try something a little bit different um, for you guys and, and see how it goes. So, so give us feedback if you, if you like this, if you like the format. We're... You know, we'll try this when we can. Obviously, we don't have mm -hmm. you know, high vis video, high res video on every single uh, home that we build. David apparently uh, is going so much, so many hours in a day. Whatever, um, <laughs> but yeah. So, so let's roll into this. Uh, you guys, always as always, drop your questions in the chat. We will still be monitoring the questions. Um, anything you want to talk about, home construction related, financing related, land prep related, what's going on in construction today related. What's taking so what are the holdups? We are here to answer all those questions, be totally transparent, give you the best mm -hmm. experience possible, all the information you're gonna need to make the right decisions. So uh, with that, Dawn. All right, let's go. Hey everybody, I'm Kelsey with Kelson Homes and I'm here in Tarrant County with Jennifer. Hi. And she's gonna show us around her brand new Breckenridge Sea Home. Yes, I can't wait to show you all the amazing details. Uh, you can see though from the outside we replaced the stone with the brick and made a couple of other changes as well. Yeah, I see that you did choose to make that wall between the dining room and the garage half siding, half brick instead of all brick. Exactly. We just want to kind of tie in that front of the house. Uh, but that was it. The front door is a standard option. The cedar headers above the windows those came standards. We just love the sea elevation for the Breckenridge. Yeah, I think it's absolutely stunning and I'm really excited to check out more of the inside. So let's head on in. Let's go. All right. Well, before okay. we go in. <laughs> so we, we, we did forget, by the way, that was Kelsey, everybody. For those of you yeah. who to refer to Kelsey and Kelsey's monitoring the chat, that, that was it. You just met Kelsey. That was Kelsey. Thanks, Kelsey. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the standard Breckenridge. Um, as you guys know, that is it is a model in Weatherford. Um, and like they were mentioning, it's usually a brick exterior, um, a stone exterior. Um, the Hoover family did change theirs out to be brick and did change that one wall that Kelsey was talking about on the exterior um, so that it's half brick, half siding, um, just to give it a little bit, little bit more visual interest for, for what they were looking for. Uh, the other thing that they did is they reversed this plan a little bit. Um, so this is kind of the standard floor plan um, for the Breckenridge, um, what the Hoover's built and what's actually in the model um, that we have in Weatherford is the one with the bonus room. So you're going to see a lot of those types of changes that are happening. But this is the standard layout. It is a absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous plan. Um, a big favorite because of that huge, huge front porch um, that you saw. Um, on the Hoover family's home that does come standard on that plan. It's got an amazing kitchen space, um, good true split bedroom um, where the kids' bedrooms are completely on the opposite side from the master suite, um, has a built-in study, formal dining room, just tons and tons and tons of space. And of course, the two-car garage um, comes as part of the plan. Yeah, so and again, of course, obviously model in Weatherford, very similar model in Katy, Texas called the Fredericksburg, mm -hmm. which uh, if you go way back in, in Tilson, Tilson heritage lineage history, the Breckenridge was born from the Fredericksburg. Um, 
So you can look at both those planes, you'll see some similarities. Um, but yeah, the Breckenridge is obviously kind of a souped up version um, of the Fredericksburg. And uh, yeah, so they just did an amazing job with it. Um, over mm-hmm. here, we built it for them, so. Yes, absolutely beautiful. Um, so this is the, the red line floor plan kind of showing the changes um, from the standard. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, they did reverse the plan. Um, so it is all kind of mirror image um, to what, what would come standard. Uh, we talked about replacing the stone with the brick. Um, they did some changing around um, with like the shelving in the closets um, and things like that. So you'll see a couple of notes about that. They went with the fireplace option, which we'll show you. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, they changed up on the rear of the home uh, where the door was located. So they actually, instead of having the exterior door where it was planned, they put in double French doors um, coming off the family room and changed the normal door location coming out of the, off of the breakfast area um, into a standard into a window there. Um, they did add some brick accents um, in the kitchen itself, um, so change that out. I believe it's stone in the in the normal plan, but we just we match the exterior uh, when we do that type of an accent wall in the kitchen, unless you don't want us to. Uh, they made some amazing changes to the master bedroom, so bathrooms. They switched that out um, so that it's a freestanding tub. You guys are gonna gonna love it. Um, all the tile selections and stuff in there. So she'll she'll tell you some more about that. Yeah. Um, did obscure that window, um, added the upstairs bonus space, um, and then that other exterior change, really very few changes, honestly, for a Tilson home. Like it was yeah. just kind of some modifications. Um, she did do one other thing in the kitchen that I don't see noted on here that was actually really cool. Um, and the like wall of pantry area, she took out some of the pantry to make space for a future wine fridge. Um, and right now it's just kind of a nice little coffee bar nook um, area. Yeah, but I mean, all in, you know, you're at, you're at uh, it's actually three bathrooms. There's 4,000 square feet. Uh, you got your two full baths downstairs. You got a full bath up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and a half bath, so we're, we got we got three and a half baths of just it's a lot of house. Um, it could easily be you know a fifth bedroom. Which of course, like you said, she used this as a as a little bit different space in the theater room that she has set up. Here. Yes, uh, yes, you get second. to see that. Pretty stoked. Okay, so what are you doing next? Um, so let's go for one couple more slides in here, and let's just show them what the rear of the home um, looked like. You see the beautiful front of the house. Uh, but then it also has a very nice back porch um, that isn't shown in the video. Um, so just kind of showing this is what the rear of the home um, looks like. But then let's go ahead and let me see real quick scope and see if we have any questions so far. We have a lot more people checking in. More shout out, some some progress. We got some progress. Folks. Yes, we do. That we do. And uh, Renee did tell us where she is. She's looking for a builder in Salado. Oh. Well, as it turns out, we build in Salado, Renee. Yeah. Uh, Lenore is waiting for her results from Geotechnical in, in Myco. Awesome. And uh, we've got Martina and Colleen building in Hidalgo in Avant. Uh, signed her plans on Saturday, uh, waiting on the appraisal and getting released to construction. Awesome. awesome. We've got Saul from Trinity. What's up, Saul? Um, Frank is hoping to build with us in Vista Ridge at RC Lake. Well, Richland Chambers. We got a lot going Richland on Chambers. around there. We do. We have a lot going on there. Um, Jesse loves the exterior of the home. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, Mike is saying that he got his dirt pad started today on the Magnolia in the Hills of Possum Kingdom. Uh, thanks to, thanks to call Cade for getting things rolling. Hey, look, what a difference the weather makes, right? Like I know. <laughs> as soon as the rain stops, we can make some progress. <laughs> yes. uh, Janet saying her daughter and Ennis just started their framework today. So excited. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and hats off to uh, to our builders. What's up, Beals? Hats off to our builders for out there. I mean, I know it's been uh, hard, you guys and customers, you know, trudging through this crazy weather and delays. But um, yeah, the, with, with good weather, we can make, we can gain some ground. Um, mm-hmm. So kudos for everybody out there hanging in and you know i don't know if anyway we'll get to more of that later but yeah let's yes. this is great, great stuff to see yeah. thanks for your feedback again drop questions in there you know anything you want to know anything you want to ask about this plan or any other plan let's get after it we'd love to help you out all righty well let's move on to the inside of the home 
and this is our new house. Oh my gosh. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Wow. So it turned out amazing. It did. It did. Just the archways and the way it opens up and it just, you're walking in the front door, it just pulls you in. You just want to see the rest of the house. Yeah, I know. So we obviously start right here in the dining room. Yes. This is amazing. The table's huge. Plenty of room for everybody. Plenty of room. In fact, fun fact, between this table, the bar in the kitchen, which I'll show you in a minute, yeah. and then the breakfast nook, I can sit 22 people <laughs> at a table space, which oh my is gosh. great for entertaining large yeah. families, which is what we have. Yeah, I love that. The holidays will be mm -hmm. plenty of room for everybody and birthdays and all the celebrations. Exactly. And then I love the cutouts in the wall right here and over there. Oh yeah, it just frames that piece of furniture and makes it very easy to kind of distinguish where pieces of furniture go in the room and it yeah. makes it pretty but makes it functional too. Yeah, and it's a really easy way to elevate the space and really give it something to look at. Absolutely. More so than just the room. Absolutely. Yeah, so what next? Let's, should, where let's should go? We go. Let's go into the family room. All right. So did you guys hear that? She has room for 22 people to sit in this house. Dawn, there's always room for one more. <laughs> yeah, if you bring your own chairs, there's, there's room for more. But yeah, 22 people seated in, in a dining area. That's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. So here we are in mm -hmm. their actual home. So this is what's, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't thank you enough, Hoover family, for letting us do this. This is fantastic. Yes. So what are we looking at now? So this is the, the foyer, just giving you a, a longer view. Um, and one of the things that we didn't, you know, we talked a lot about the, the dining room in that section, but what we didn't show you is to the other side of the hallway, um, and through that arch, there's actually a full study and powder bath. So we have that. Um, so here, sorry, there's the dining area. Yeah, here's the, so that's just a, a out, you know, zoomed out photo of the dining area itself. So you can see you get the window to the front um, and that, you know, knockout that we were talking about um, in that space that holds the furniture, um, which is just gorgeous. Um, and then on the other side of the foyer, you have the office and powder bath um, that comes standard as part of the plan. And and that office actually has a full cl a closet in it. So it's very easy if you wanted to add another bathroom to, to make that change. But this is a great work from home space for them. So, yeah. yep. All right. Well, before we, we move on to the next room, um, we did have a couple questions come in. Um, Renee is asking if we can do sinks in the utility room. We can, Renee. Yeah, we do two different types of sinks. We have kind of a, a very utility sink. Are you, well, we do three things, I guess. We can stub out for a future sink if you want to, maybe you don't know which kind you want just yet. So we can just add the hot, the cold, and the drain for it. Uh, we can also do an actual utility sink, which is kind of a very um, utilitarian fiberglass, like what you would think in like a like a janitor closet kind of thing we have people that request that again a lot of rural customers and then we also have obviously we can do a cabinet with a big deep sink in it an undermount sink on granite that kind of thing so there's a couple of different options on that but yes we do sinks in utility rooms okay and then tara is asking how hard it is to do the cutout in the dining area is it super expensive she's building a little port um so i'll tell you something it's actually it's a little deceiving actually not so we, we charge it just like an art niche is basically what it is. it's just a great big art niche um and actually the way it's done this is a little bit sneaky is it built but, forward exactly this is a thicker wall yeah so okay so, uh, a little david copperfield action going on here a little little uh little trickery no it's a it's a six inch wall typically and then we recess um a portion of it in uh, to make it kind of like a big art niche. So no, they're, they're not very, very expensive. I think they're done either by art niche or one on this side, maybe it was probably the, the price of two art niches. So it's, it's, it's a very, very inexpensive item. You know, you're not talking thousands of dollars or anything like that. It's, it's, it's yeah. very, very affordable and makes a big impact as you can see. And there's it actually does, some, yeah. in the gallery, if you go through the Matterport, uh, this home later virtual tour, you can actually see it through kind of the hallway going in from the dining room and into the, the bedrooms, that area, there's some more there, but yeah, it's, uh, very nice little aesthetic feature for your, your mm -hmm. you know, to show off all of your wedding gifts that you don't use there. It's cool. <laughs> well, then you'd be using them because you'd be displaying them. So there you are. There you are. All right. We have Mary Sala joining us, um, building the Gonzalez in Trinity, Texas. 
Awesome. A lot of East Texas folk coming on today. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Denise is asking, do we know the change in price due to brick and siding on the outside instead of the stone? It's going to vary by region, Denise. So you're really better served getting with your um, design consultant, but that is something that they can price out pretty easily. But yeah, there definitely was a credit um, mm -hmm. in their way from going from, from stone to brick. Uh, the siding is pretty well the same because the, 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 Base model comes with uh, stone and siding, just like you saw it on, on on the model on our website. But going to brick instead of stone, there is a credit for the for that. So okay. and that will vary by region a little bit. All right. And, and Saul is building the Gonzales C in Trinity, Texas, waiting on the pad to be designed. Um, Wendy is asking if there's space, can a dog wash station be added in the utility room or the garage? Yes. Yes, we, we do those. So we would just get with you to kind of talk about how, how tall you want it, what type of shower head, all of that. But that is something that we can definitely accommodate. Um, Jaybo is asking, can you provide details on how a home is plumbed for a water softener and give a general cost? Sure. Um, so general cost, you're, you're the thousand to two thousand dollar range, Jaybo, um, depending on the size of home and number of stub outs. I know I'm having a little bit of connection issue stuff, so we're working through that. Um, no. But the biggest part about a house being stub roughed in for water. So what is a water softener to start with? So um, you know, water varies obviously across the state. Even if you're on a, a public water entity, it, it comes from a well somewhere. Okay, it comes. It comes somewhere either from surface water, lakes, reservoirs, all that kind of stuff, or it comes from uh, subterranean, right? Some kind of aquifer somewhere, um, either your own or community one. And so the calcium and amount, the, the chemical makeup of the water is going to vary a little bit, mainly on the minerals, okay? Um, and so really hard water is, is typically when it has high calcium, high mineral content. And the water softener is a, is a device that it passes through as part of the filtration system to remove some of those minerals, typically with, with some type of rock salt. Okay, so we will rough in for a water softener. Um, so the pricing I'm talking about is not for the water softener itself, it's just to plumb for it. But you do need an outlet, it has to have power. So you need an outlet there, and you need a, a water stub, obviously. You typically need a drain as well. Um, or we're going to do it exactly that way. And then the most important thing about it is that your hose bibs, your ex exterior water faucets, they are going to be on what's known as a home run, or they're going to be, do you want them to still be on the natural hard water? You don't want to put those on soft water. So ordinarily when we're plumbing a house, we just kind of go around the house and with the most efficient way, shortest amount of runs, we just kind of, as we get to an exterior outlet, we just kind of tee off and put that, and then we go around to the next bathroom. You can't do that with, uh, when you're doing a water softener, you have to have a, a line that is dedicated, which is why it's a home run. It goes straight from the supply to that water soft, uh, water spigot outside hose bib. Another one to the other one, another one to the other one. So part of the price is there's more labor involved in that. The reason being is you don't want to be watering plants and things like that outside with water that's gone through a water softener because it does have a little bit higher salinity content. Great mm. for drinking, great for washing, great for washing dishes. You don't get the water spots. Not as good when you're watering your uh, your plants. Um, yeah, I don't like soft water. I mean, I like salt water. So that's that's the where the really the plumbing charge comes in. That and of course the stuff out there, the power, the drain, all that. So yeah, okay. I mean, great. Not everybody needs them. Not everybody needs them. But but for those who do, we do it. Okay, perfect. Um, Teresa is asking, can Tilson do guest houses to match the house we get? Um, yes, we can. Yeah, we have um, a casita design that's already done. Um, we actually are working on a two bedroom casita um, that'll be coming to our Waco location. But yes, we can absolutely help you with that. And then Frank is asking, will a 50 amp car charging station likely make you have to go to a 320 amp service? So Frank, first I want to know if you if it's a, for a Tesla or if this is for the Hummer truck. Which EV is this for? And then uh, I'm so curious. Is it the Ford Lightning? I want to know. I want to know what what's piqued your interest. I want to know what folks are af actually after. Are we after our Tilson folks after Teslas, Ford Lightnings, Hummer trucks? That's what I want to know. Let us know in the comments. Um, the answer is almost assuredly yes, Frank. We we you you are going to want it because it's a 
it's a fast charging. They do have the one, or at least the ones I've heard of. Is, oh, Tesla truck. There we Tesla go. truck. Oh. Oh. That. Okay. So the 50 amp is for the fast charger. Um, so they have a slower one that works on a regular, um, like 110. But yeah, for your for a dedicated 50 amp charger, which they do sell, Tesla Tesla will sell it to you. We are almost assured to get to bump up to a 320 amp service. Um, it's going to depend on the co-op that you're on, but but they're going to most likely want you to do that. That'd be the best thing to do, particularly if your home is all electric. So if you don't have any, if you're not going to have any gas appliances, so your water heater, your furnaces, um, cooking, that kind of stuff, if that's all going to be electric, guaranteed, we're going to need to do a, a 320 service. Okay. Great question. Great. Testing. Thanks for asking. All righty. Well, let's move on. Um into the living room. You've asked the questions. We'll keep answering them. We're going back to the stellar video. Back to Kelsey yes. and Mrs. Hoover. Back to Kelsey and Mrs. Hoover. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. It is so open and inviting. I the love beams, it. Aren't they beautiful? Just They're that, awesome. The, those huge exposed beams that you just, it, it just draws your eyes upward. Oh yeah. And it really makes the space just, I mean, welcoming, inviting the warm tones of mm -hmm. the wood. It's, it's awesome. I love that color that you chose. It really complements the whole room. Thank you. Yeah, we wanted that feeling of being like open and lots of space and still yeah. yet being inviting and, and welcoming. Yeah, and then the fireplace, Austin. Oh, yes. I love that you chose to include All the this. way up. It's such a statement piece. Yeah. People walk in and they're just blown away by this fireplace. Yes, and I love this brick that you chose. It's so weathered but warm and Instead of the stone, you chose this brick. We did. Yeah. We, we chose the brick all throughout the house, inside and outside. It's the same brick. And we wanted that kind of old world country charm mm -hmm. of the brick instead of the rock. And so we went with that. And um, I couldn't be happier with the choice. And then the mantle, it's that same rough hewn uh, cedar. And it's in the same stain as the as the, the beams. beams and it, all the wood. All yeah. the trim. It's all, it all comes together. Yeah, I think it looks absolutely stunning. And then the windows, I see that you chose to do the double door. We did, we did. So initially, this was supposed to have three large windows, mm -hmm. which would have been beautiful. And then the, the back door would have been off the breakfast nook. But we chose to move the back door, put in those double French doors, um, and that way it just kind of opens out onto the property as, yeah. as an inviting thing for people to gather outside. Yeah, and it lets in so much light too. I mean, even if you had all the lights off in this room, there's so much natural light coming in that you really... Absolutely. You really don't even need to turn on the lights. Most days we don't. Most days we leave it off and just let the, the natural sunlight come yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So let's go this way and check out more of the kitchen. Yes, absolutely. All right, I'll follow you. Okay. So what'd you guys think of that living room? Yeah, tell us what you think about uh, what you saw in the living room, what they did with the fireplace. We think it's spectacular, obviously. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I love the addition of the, the French doors there because when you're having, when she's having her 22 people over for dinner, you can just open the living room and let everything <laughs> spill outside. Yeah, I would probably be leaving if 22 people were at my house. Doing that. I would be the guy rushing outside. <laughs> I gotta go check out what we're cooking outside. Like, I'm not cooking outside. I'm going outside anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna go hide. Yeah. Um, but, but here's the view of that room if you guys wanna, wanted to see the picture. Um, let's see. Wendy is saying her husband wants the Tesla. She wants a BMW or Mercedes. Um, since it'll be her car, who do we think is gonna win? Mm -hmm. Ooh. If we're placing bets, Wendy, I would like to bet on Wendy. Um, uh, yes, yeah, that's yeah. where my money is. For sure. Um, Leslie saying it's a beautiful home. Agree. Jesse says absolutely stunning. So pretty. Yeah, and something else to point out for the for the for the for the A V nerds. I mean there is uh there there's uh tubing conduit that, that's here for uh HDMI, different things like that. So there's kind of a brushed finish, uh, we don't have a close up of it, but a brushed finish kind of receptacle that you can get up and and have equipment. You know, maybe on the other side of this or up in the attic or someplace. So it's kind of nice. You, you can have a, a nice clean look um, where you don't have, you know, stuff sitting on the mantle. So anyway, an option awesome. always. Of course. Awesome. I think mean, it's obviously a gas fireplace. Um, mm -hmm. We're in a climate zone three area up there in uh, outside of Fort Worth. So. Yeah. 
Um, David's saying he, you know, absolutely love their fireplace. It's the, it really like that it's the same brick um, interior and exterior. So it really just ties the whole home together. And it comes full circle, right? I mean, the, yeah. the Tilton home I grew up in, built in 1976, had a brick fireplace very similar to this that matched the brick on the outside of our home. And nice. Uh, that, uh, I don't know how long ago 1976 was, but it was a long, long, <laughs> long time ago. Wasn't that long? <laughs> <laughs> Stay in. Seems like a long time. Anyway, it does beautiful. seem like a long time. And uh, let's see, Wendy's asking in the Cedar Creek, can we locate the fireplace in the corner versus along the back wall? Well, I strategically brought up the website so that I would have that. You don't have to reference it, but uh, I can, the, we probably can, we may have to make some modifications because it being a two story, there's a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, other stuff going on. Um, but so she's wanting along the back wall. Is that what we're talking about? In the, the corner, yeah, in the corner. corner instead of the back wall. Okay, so the answer is yes, um, but we need to do. We need to be sure it's going to be the corner of like where the master bedroom is uh, in the cedar. So where the family room meets the master bedroom is kind of where it would need to to go if we're going to do that. Um, and even then, we we're going to be sure we we'll have to get separate pricing on it because the chimney is going to have to come up through that covered porch. So there's a covered porch on the back of that home and, and we'll want to make sure that the chimney will be actually have to be flashed all the way around for all four mm -hmm. sides, as opposed to just on two sides when it's on uh, oh, three sides, I'm sorry, when it's on the back porch, I mean, on the back wall. So anyway, yeah, it can absolutely be done. Um, you know, the one thing to think about is when folks, you know, one of the reasons people don't, I, I love a fireplace in a corner. I think it's super cool some feedback I have gotten from customers is that, yeah, but then I, I lose two walls instead of just one to a fireplace. Oh so yeah. You kind know, of six, one way, but just, Hey, I love the way they look. It look, it looks, I've seen them with stone or brick all the way up. They look fantastic. So mm -hmm. first choice, but yes, we can certainly put it in the corner instead. Okay. And um, Peggy says she loves the living room. She's doing a similar look, but extending the vaulted beam to the rear porch. Uh, the brick floor to ceiling fireplace is stunning. Yeah, agreed. And then Frank is asking, because you mentioned that that had to be a gas fireplace. Um, are there restrictions on wood burning fireplaces in some areas? Man, there are, Frank. And it's actually not on wood burning itself. It's not so much that it's wood burning. It is the tightness of the home. That's the struggle. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, of course, there's theories out there that they're trying to get rid of wood burning. Some places, some states make it almost impossible. Colorado makes it very difficult to have wood burning fireplaces anymore. They have a lot of fires. Um, mm -hmm. California, probably not going to have a lot of wood fireplaces in the near future if they don't already. So, you know, you could say they're trying to do that here in Texas. Maybe, maybe not. But the, what, really what they are trying to do is make sure the homes are built very, very tight. Um, so on a gas fireplace like the one here, you, it's sealed. Like the it has its own combustible airspace, you know, because it, it has fuel, a constant supply of fuel. Gas does. Um, mm -hmm. Gas is supplying the fireplace with a constant supply of fuel. Whereas wood burning fireplaces need air. Right. So they need um, you have fuel or the fire, the, the I'm sorry, the wood itself. But then in addition to that, you need oxygen. You need, you need right. air to make it happen. So you can still do it in a climate zone three where we're using spray foam insulation. But it is a it is a super sophisticated wood burning fireplace called the Constitution is a brand that we use. And it is uh, got doors on it that will seal. Um, and it's rated to still burn while the doors are sealed. So same thing, it creates its own combustible airspace, but it is obviously more expensive than your kind of run of the mill builder wood burning fireplace. It can still be done, but it's, it's um, to make sure that we meet that uh, three air changes per hour or less, we do have to use a much more sophisticated firebox. Uh, the days of the old, just brick masonry fireplace all the way where it's true masonry inside all the way up those days are pretty well out of the picture if you're going to meet code um mm -hmm. does it mean people are still doing it in some places texas is a big state it's hard to police okay there are custom builders out there that'll do stuff that's not to code and it's really pretty we're just not we're not going to do that um so because the question would be if they're willing to do that not to code what else would they not do to code and not tell you about it? so um but yeah, so so it's it's not so much a restriction on wood burning, Frank. It's a great question. It's, it's a restriction on air tightness and air changes per hour. Okay. Great question. That makes sense. 
Um, and then Teresa is asking, she just bought 17 acres in Atascosa. How long would it be to get someone out there to tell me where would be the best place to put our new home? Well, Teresa, you know, I, I, I don't know if you're under contract with us yet or not, if you've done a deposit. Um, obviously, if you know that's where your house is going to go, there's nothing really holding you up um, mm -hmm. on, on taking that next move. Obviously, we have to take care of our the, the customers we've contracted with first. So if, if that area were to be able to get caught up from our, our land evaluation, our site preparation specialist, then we could potentially set up an appointment to go take a look at it. But uh, it may be a little while because we, we have to take care of the people that have contracted with us first. Um, but we, ought, we, we have been known to come out there and, and take a look. But the reality is if you got 17 acres, there's somewhere we can put a house that's not going to be a problem at all. So, mm -hmm. and we are going to help you with that's part of the process anyway. When you when you do buy and build with us, is we come out there and give you that guidance on on what's the best place, where utility is going to be coming from, you know, what do we see out there now, what's the slope of the land looking like, what's drainage look like long term, and we walk you through all that. Great question. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and move into their kitchen. Come on into the kitchen. Let me show you all the amazing details in here. This is an incredible kitchen. I know how much you had mentioned that you loved your kitchen and this was like the one thing that you were really looking forward to the most. Oh yes, by far. So check out this huge island. This was standard, uh, but we got to of course choose the color of the mm -hmm. granite, um, the finishes and all that. And, and just, I love how much space this gives us. Yeah. And, and then, there's tons of room on the other side too. Plenty on the bar of room for the knees to fit underneath. Easily, easily. And then you can kind of see a little bit of the brick underneath. Yeah. So just that touch of brick that ties into the brick here. Yes, I think yeah. this is absolutely stunning. I love this little accent wall. Yeah. Oh, me too. Me too. It adds so much character, and it's kind of unexpected in a kitchen, yeah. but I love it. Yeah, and, and then this is not your normal subway tile, is it? It looks a little no. bit almost rugged. It, it does. It's actually Italian. Uh, it's one of the standard, one of the choices um, in the Tilson showroom, but it's got that kind of wavy texture yeah. to it. So it's just a little imperfect, uh, which I love because then it makes it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it really ties in with the countertop choices mm -hmm. and this stove is incredible. I love gas stoves, yes. they are great. They are, they are. And then we actually chose to recess this a little mm -hmm. bit and add a little niche, which is perfect for herbs and uh, our salt and pepper. I've, I sometimes have little, um, herb plants up yeah. there and it's it everything that you want to be able to grab quickly exactly exactly just right there um, and we did customize this a little bit so this was supposed to be three large cabinets it's uh -huh. kind of your built-in pantry right there um, we didn't need that much space and so we chose to kind of create a, an extra little workspace there yeah I love it and it could it doubles as a little coffee bar. It's mm -hmm. perfect. It's the one-stop shop in the morning. Exactly, exactly. And then we put in, um, we actually had a little electrical outlet put in, put in down there. So if we wanted to, we could put a little wine fridge down yeah. there. We could do that at a later date. And, and just the flexibility that we could customize it like that was amazing. Yeah, it's an incredible kitchen. I'm in love. I want one myself. <laughs> All right, Let, so over here in the breakfast nook is it's like the perfect space. It ties in everything in all together. It really does. And uh, you can kind of see, this is where the, the door was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We switched out for a window and then we're just encased in this natural sunlight. Yeah. It's awesome to just sit and be very casual, very informal. Uh, but when we have large groups, this is the kid table. So yes. then they're here in the kitchen. Yeah, and, and it's such an easy place to gather as a family in the morning for breakfast all together, or if you wanted to do it like a little study area. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I love it. All right. So should we go this way and check out the master? Absolutely. All right. All right. So the kitchen to win all kitchens in here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I, I love, again, you've got the continuation of the brick. Um, and we went ahead and had Kelsey zoom in a little bit in the in the presentation to show that backsplash um, and the the niche that they put in the wall uh, for their you know that shelf holds their spices and I love how they did that as a herringbone pattern um, just kind of offsets a little bit from it but yeah I, that tile is just gorgeous because it's it's like Kelsey was saying it's not that standard you know shiny. Uh, subway, perfect subway tile. It's got, you know, some texture to it. So really some old world charm that just really tied this entire house together. It's just absolutely beautiful. 
All right, um, we do have a couple more questions. Um, Gerana is asking in climate zone two, is climate zone two for warmer climates? I know it determines your type of insulation, but what if you wanted spray insulation? Is that a large upgrade? It is not a large upgrade. Um, and so, yeah, we can absolutely do spray foam in, in climate zone two, do it quite a bit for people. Um, it's, it's not very expensive right now. So I mean, we're in August, 2021, it's about $2 a square foot of, of uh, heated living area. And what that part of that is not just the insulation, uh, because obviously you're getting some kind of credit for the bats that we aren't doing and you're paying extra mm -hmm. for the spray foam, but we're completely changing up the HVAC system. Um, so we have to use a dehumidifier. We're, do, we're doing some, some different things because the home is, is inevitably going to be tighter. And climate zone two is typically not, not just warmer, that is to some degree, but more humidity. Um, okay. so think climate zone two, think, think of how a, a, a warm front or cold front, a cold front typically enters the state of Texas. It blows from Northwest down to Southeast. So as you get closer to the coast, the humidity is higher. And so when you, if you enclose that humidity real tight with spray foam insulation, that's awesome. You've made the house tight, but now you've trapped potentially trapped a lot of moisture inside. So we have to give the house. We already do fresh air intakes on all of our homes, um, just mm -hmm. for the air quality itself. But when we do spray foam anywhere in Texas, we're adding a dehumidifier to it uh, to to combat that in, in this, method, which is kind of funny because in Colorado, they do the opposite. They add humidifiers to their HVAC systems so that you don't wake up with nosebleeds. Um, and it doesn't work. I still wake up with nosebleeds if I'm in Colorado. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you the dehumidifier is a big part of it. It's, it is a little bit more sophisticated HVAC system when we go to the, to the spray foam installation. So it's more, it's, it's, and it needs to be comprehensive with whoever you're working with, HVAC contractor, whatever builder you're working with, it needs to be a comprehensive plan. You don't just throw spray foam at a house and not talk to your electrician, HVAC contractor, plumber, all that about it. Cause it comes down, I mean, there's, there's certain appliances you can and can't use the way you have to stub gas. There's a lot that goes into it when you start getting into spray foam. So get a professional like us. <laughs> we do this. We do. This. We do. All right. Um, Frank is asking, can some high dormer windows go into the cathedral ceiling on the Angelina? So it's going to depend on which elevation, um, you know, when you do the cathedral ceiling on, on the Angelina, it's, it's, it would have to go all the way through from the porch most likely. Um, so I don't think it would be centered is is part of the struggle um mm -hmm. take some some design alteration you might could get one you know the, obviously the study is what's on the front of the house so it's not really going to work from there because there's a big wall um stopping it but you might could do a dormer on the back side uh of that home so overlooking the back so you get the cathedral ceiling you get the back covered porch you might could put a dormer up there that allows light to to come down in um, so it's possible, but it probably worked easier on the back of the home than with the front of the home. Okay. Great question. All right. Um, if James Sheblack wants to correct me on that. He's more than welcome to our VP of design and drafting. So he's, <gasps> I can see him already rolling his eyes going, oh, um, <laughs> design questions. All right. A uh, different Frank is saying he's building the Travis plan with the alternate side garage. Can you build a bonus room over the garage instead of the main house? Yeah, Frank, it'd be super small, man. There's just not quite enough space. There's not enough plate height. So there's not, you, you know, you wouldn't have enough. I certainly wouldn't uh, have enough head clearance, you know, going up there. It would be such a small room. I'm not sure you, I don't know how big of a garage you're doing, but if it's just the, mm -hmm. the uh, garage option, it's not going to be big enough to do a bonus room above that. You're going to need more attic volume. Uh, that's why those bonus rooms come up is a lot. Because even a lot of our bonus rooms, um, including the Breckenridge and this one you'll see like it goes down to like a even a five foot plate on the edge so the ceiling slopes down and then go, and it would be you know like maybe four or five feet wide and 14 feet long and I'm not sure how much value you'd get out of that but okay all right that makes sense let's go ahead and move on to their master bedroom Beautiful room. Check out the ceiling. Yes, this is awesome. So you chose to keep everything in here the same? Everything's the same as on the plans. The mm -hmm. ceiling is part of the standard plans, the exposed beams, all of that. And then we just carried our, our color choices into here. So yeah. the, 
the wood is staying the same as all the rest of the wood in the house just to keep it consistent, but we really didn't change anything. We loved the room the way it was. Yeah, and then you did make a few changes to the master bath. We did, a couple of changes. Okay. Yep. Oh, wow. This is an amazing bathroom. Isn't it gorgeous? This, I would live here, I, just in the bathroom. I wouldn't even I, need to go I do. Else. I do live here. <laughs> Um, yes, we made a lot of changes to this bathtub area. Mm -hmm. So initially, in the original floor plans, both of these walls had the inset arches, just like in the formal dining room. Uh, we took those out, we made this just a regular wall, brought the tile up further for the freestanding bathtub, and then put in those recessed niches right there. Yes, and I love the deco tile that you chose. I think that's a beautiful choice. It really complements the rest of the wall tile and the rest of your choices. I see that you kept them consistent throughout the whole house. We did, we did. We carried in that same cabinet style from the kitchen, the same granite from mm -hmm. the kitchen. We just wanted that consistency throughout the house. Yeah, and it looks absolutely stunning. Thank you. And then the shower is also beautiful. I, I think it's the same as the plan. Yes, we didn't make any changes to the shower. Um, we love the fact that it had the built-in bench, it's got the shelves, and we kept the, the tile choices consistent with the, around the bathtub, mm -hmm. so. Awesome, well, should we go upstairs and check out the bonus room? Yes, let's okay. do that. All right. So what a gorgeous owner's retreat. Um, just that that space is like like she was saying they didn't really change anything um, in the bedroom itself um, from the actual plan. So all that that you're seeing is is included in the Breckenridge plan and the pricing that you're seeing on the website. So that stepped ceiling, uh, the beams that are in there, the ceiling fan, all the large windows, all of that is what you you get when you buy that home. Um, just include it naturally. That's one of the you also all the bells and whistles beautiful. that come with this plan. Beautiful view. You have to substitute your own beautiful view. Yes, yes. In beautiful view, not included, but we assume you have that already. Um, of course. And then the master bathroom is just quite the yes. the oasis. It's just gorgeous. I love everything. Everything she did in here. So, uh, like she mentioned, they changed the whole tub area um, and made it into you know put in a freestanding tub. Um, did tile on the the full wall. You know, well, most three quarters of the way up the wall. Um, it did the, the run of the deco tile, um, added those two niches that also have, have the deco tile in them. And I just love her, col her color choices there in the walk-in shower. Uh, just looks amazing. Love the, the tile and the, the shower floor. That's the black and white pattern. And then repeating the deco tile um, around the outside of the shower, as well as on the step. I, we don't see a lot of people that do that, not the step, the bench um, that's there. We don't see a lot of people put that on the bench. And I thought that that was just a wonderful choice. Um, just really ties ties everything together. Um, as you can see, you know, it, it's his and her vanities. Um, everybody's got their own space and that nice, the bench in between um, with that window. And like we mentioned at the start, they did add the obscure film um, to, yeah, to that window. It's a lot of light coming. It's really, yes. really, really pretty. Yeah. And their color choices just even make it look even lighter and brighter. It's just, they did a fabulous job. I just yeah. love this space. A little storage underneath the bench and just, it's really spectacular. Mm -hmm. Great yeah, job. This plan just has, has a lot of amazing, amazing little touches um, to it. All right. I don't see any questions. So I guess we'll go ahead and move oh, on. Yeah. Y'all keep space. asking more questions. Be glad to keep answering them. So put your questions in and we'll answer them and we're going to roll on with more video and see more of this home. Yep. Let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. All right. So this was the bonus. We added all this space up here. There's a ton of space. This yes. is awesome. Check out the playroom. Check out these awesome egg chairs. Oh my gosh. Aren't these the fun? Chairs? The kids love them. They just sit here and read and get all curled up or they can play. Just this is a huge Space. Yes. We choose to use it for a playroom, but it's a huge space up here. Yeah. So um, with the bonus room, it, it includes the theater room, another bedroom, a whole nother bathroom, mm -hmm. and so that is that's a whole nother bedroom suite right there with a bedroom and a bathroom, and then yes, this playroom and the theater room, which I have it set up as a sewing room. Okay. Um, but it it can be whatever you need it yeah, to be. Yeah, I definitely want to see your sewing room. Let's look at it. 
Oh, this is a ton of extra space. I love this. Isn't it? It's a, it's amazing. So it's meant to be a theater room. Uh huh. You've got the built-ins here, mount your TV, put some couches or sofas in here. You'd have plenty of space. But I chose to use it as a craft room. And so yeah. I've got all the storage, um, lots of space for my furniture. It, it just works out beautifully. Yeah, it's a great use of space. I mean, you have tons of room in here for storage. You have your own kind of room in the house to just mm -hmm. kind of do your own thing. Mom's room. Yes, exactly. And if you ever did want to convert it back into a TV room, it'd be super easy to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, so easy. there's tons of room in here for couches, chairs, plenty of room to put a TV up there. Without a doubt. Yeah. All right. Should we head back downstairs? I think we're done looking at the house. All right. All right. Sure awesome. Go. Yeah. So I love the egg chairs too. I have to find, I have to find my own now. But yeah, this, they've got the great upstairs bonus space. Um, so you saw the bonus room and you saw her sewing room. Um, what we didn't, sh what they didn't show in the video is there's actually, like they mentioned, the full um, bedroom and bathroom um, upstairs as well, which is on the next next page of this. Um, so that's the upstairs full bathroom um, that is up there, and then another another full bedroom with a large closet. So that's really a, a whole another living space upstairs. It's yeah, this is going back to what I was uh, talking about with a good friend uh, who asked about the, the Travis Frank. Uh, being able to. So yeah, Frank, sorry, um, is the slope ceiling. So this is a big dormer actually on the back of the uh, Breckenridge, and then going back to to this shot. You know, this mm -hmm. is so just kind of saying. You know, as your ceiling is sloping down, you know, this is a dormer. Obviously, there's a dormer over there, but as that ceiling's coming down, so you have to have a, quite a bit of, you know, and this is over the whole middle part of the home uh, to give us this this kind of size bonus room. So even to do one like, you know, 18 by 20, which is the size of kind of your smallest average bonus room, you, you're you going to need to have a lot of space down below as that ceiling is, is sloping up. So Okay. A visualization I was trying to talk about because apparently this doesn't always get it done. So maybe a picture, no. <laughs> maybe a picture else, perhaps. All right. Um, and then just kind of moving on with other stuff that we did not see um, in, in the tours. There's a whole other, it's almost its own wing um, of the house off the other end of the living room um, from the, you know, opposite side of the kitchen and the master bath. You've got two additional bathrooms down there that are very good size. And then this really nice desk study storage area um, that makes that's part of that hallway there. So this is a great homework space for the kids. Um, if you end up having to homeschool again, which we really hope you don't. Um, but, you know, it's a good good space for that. Lots of storage. So just a really nice feature um, of this plan. Yeah. And this is yeah included uh, in, in the Breckenridge no matter what. So, again, this one is, is really fully what comes out of the gate. Yes. It definitely does. And then you've got a whole nother bathroom um, that, that side of the house. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you, uh, Kelsey and Mrs. Hoover for mm -hmm. this. Uh, also, who do we credit all these photos to? Kelsey took all the photos. Exactly. Yeah. Kelsey yeah. took the photos too. Yeah. yeah so, which actually we can, we can let them wrap up and, and talk about the finish up with the house. So well, let's do that. Let them do that. All right. All right. Well, thank you for showing me around. Oh, your home is so welcome. absolutely beautiful. Thank you. We love it. Do we you want to do you want to run me through some of the basics of it? Sure. So, with the bonus upstairs, it comes to just under 4,000 square feet. It's got four bedrooms, but the office could be a fifth bedroom mm -hmm. if you needed it. Yeah, with that closet and and the window, it's it would be a perfect space. Exactly. And then three and a half bathrooms. So, plenty of space for our entire family. Yeah, I think it's going to turn into a great entertaining space. I'm so excited that you trusted us to bring your dream home to life. And for all of you watching, we will be doing more customer home tours soon. So be sure to tune into those. And we hope to someday soon make you part of the Tilton family. All right. So Kelsey's trying to put Eric out of a job, which I'm sure he's down. He's, How many of y'all would like to see Kelsey instead of me? Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> of course. No, seriously, Kelsey, you did an amazing job. Thank you for doing that. Yes. Thank you, Uber, for letting us share uh, and gig them. I saw some some little hints here through the house. Uh, mm -hmm. that may or may not point to a certain school. Um, so anyway. I thought you might like that. Yeah, of course. Of course. 
so what kind of questions we guys keep asking your questions we want to answer them um and uh, we've got some other few announcements. Donna has a, a right. sneak peek kind of thing, but uh, we'll, let's answer these folks' questions. They've waited. Okay. We, we so promise you know, we promise Frank them. is asking, and Vista Ridge HOA requires 240-pound shingles. Mm -hmm. Do you have the Open Durations Premium as an upgrade? Well, we do have them as an upgrade, uh, but you might not need them. Uh, so we've, we've actually been able to have Owens Corning write letters on the uh, on our Oak Ridge shingle because they, they have a limited lifetime warranty. So shingles aren't really rated in pounds anymore. Some of these, okay. and even though Vista Ridge is a fairly new subdivision, sometimes they just kind of copy and paste from other developments they've done. Shingles haven't been really rated in pounds in a very, very long time, probably 12 or 14 years. They kind of, people, the industry kind of moved away from that, but deed restrictions are kind of set in stone. <laughs> so okay. um, we've had that, we've had to have, different shingle manufacturers over the years uh, write letters saying you're good. You know, what they don't want is the old three tab flimsy shingle. That's what they don't want. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to go to the Owen, Owens Corning, the duration premium, we can certainly do that. Um, it's a great shingle. Obviously we, we, we sell that shingle. We even do the um, uh, one above that. Um, so it has a big hail rating on it and it's a shingle. So anyway, yes, we can do it. No okay. Perfect. All right. Um, Jesse is asking, she has cattle on her property. Do we need it fenced off from the entry gate to the house location or just fencing around the home with extra room for large trucks? Yeah, the, the latter, Jesse. So uh, you don't have to fence all the way down the road. Um, yeah, just, just some type of fencing around the, the job site, you know, obviously the house itself and then enough space, like you said, to be able to stage material because the, the cows will walk on everything. Um, so if we drop it off, they're curious. Um, and they're not the smartest creatures on four legs. So, um, and they're very they're hungry, part, which makes them a disaster on a job site. So, um, yeah, just, just enough space around there for that. And then, you know, some kind of gate where we can get in and out, even if it's a, uh, you know, a, a tension gate, it doesn't even have to be a swinging gate if you don't want it to be. I we've had customers that do it. Uh, I know Patriot makes a, uh, electric, a, a wire fence. Um, if you don't want to do barbed wire or something like that, but it, it, any kind of temporary fence that'll keep the cows out is good. Okay. Perfect. Um, Frank is commenting, looks like the Breckenridge can have about every option already built into the standard plan. Yeah, it really does. Like it, this plan comes with a lot. Um, it's a beautiful plan. Um, John is saying, uh, describe a great setup for a covered outdoor kitchen adjacent to the kitchen. Yeah, I feel like I'm playing it's like a game show. Like, how do I, I know. if I get it wrong, John? What are you, um, <laughs> Don, you go first. Describe a great setup for a cover. Oh gosh, I don't adjacent to the kitchen. I, don't I guess know. a door would be good. We'd want a door. Yes, going out. yes. Probably um, the double doors would be would be good. Yeah. So um, doors, and then, I mean, if you truly want to use this outdoor kitchen, John, maybe you know a gas stub in case you want to do a propane mm -hmm. grill of some sort later. Um, a water stub, so hot, cold, and a drain. Um, so you could have a sink if you're wanting to do that out there. But that's really about all you need. I mean, you know, have enough space. You know, I. I at least seven or eight feet um, is what I'd want. And really it just needs to be one wall. Like you see some of these that are L-shaped. I don't think it needs to be all that. I don't think I want to give up that much of my covered porch, my outdoor living area. Right. Um, I don't need that much space to prep and cook and all that. I, I've got a big gigantic island inside. I'm going to season my burger. I'm seasoning my burgers in the air conditioning. Okay. Like I'm prepping all my food inside. Um, Where the bugs aren't. Yeah, no bugs, no mosquitoes, no heat, and I have AC. I'm doing that inside, so just think about that. You know, like like would, would it be cool? It looks amazing, but mm -hmm. how much use will you really get out of it over and above what you would get use out of the kitchen that you're already paying for? So that's something to consider when you're investing um, in, in that kind of space. So maybe just a seven or eight foot long spot that's got electrical for a little, um, you know, outdoor fridge of some sort, gas for cooking. And water, if you need that, although that's even debatable if you even need water. So, okay, perfect. And um, Lenore is asking: After our stakeout, we were told there was a difference of eight feet from one corner to another. Will that all be leveled out by the foundation, or will they bring in fill? We are in the hill country on top of limestone. Yeah, typically that's going to be leveled out with foundation in in there because, like you said, you're on limestone, so there's not really can't really go cutting into the dirt because um, it's rock. So, in a lot of cases like that, we do set forms to the out of level. There are some situations where we do bring in fill for a pad, but it's very, very rare 
in, in that type of situation uh, where we're chasing it at a level. Um, Cause my guess is it doesn't just, that eight foot drop is on the footprint of your home. And my guess is it doesn't just get magically flat on that little corner, it probably continues going, right? So right. you can bring fill in all you want to, but it just keeps, you're chasing an outlet, if that makes sense. So uh, right. I think that we'll be, we'll be building it to the outer level. We'll be setting a, a form on the backside. And, back, and that's very common in, in the Hill Country. Okay. All right. Um, Donna's saying that she really likes the new format. Uh, thanks for changing it up and likes to see new ideas. So thank you for letting us know that. And um, we have a question about the freestanding tub and how much extra is that? So uh, I don't have an exact price on the freestanding tub, but, uh, and, and there are different, there's, I think, three different ones that we offer mm -hmm. through Kohler, uh, through Sterling and through Kohler. So you'd want to get exactly with your design consultant and get and get the exact one, and they can show you what the different ones that there are um, to get you the pricing on those. Versus, but you are going to get credit for the tub, obviously, that was already there. Um, right. Which is a big tub with a, you know. With all the tiles and, around. And, exactly, yeah. and cabinet front and all that, so. It's a, it's a, you're only charged the net difference. Okay, perfect. Um, Frank is sharing, he also likes this new format. Uh, feels like he's on a Zoom call uh, directly cool. with us. All right, cool, interesting. All right, uh, Nancy is asking if we are having issues getting brick. We're having issues getting everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. it's, uh, it ain't just brick, so yes, um, mm -hmm. brick, brick is tough. It's it actually is certain colors, okay? I mean, can we get brick? Yes, we can get brick. Yes. And I will say Acme has been very good um, as, as transparent and as um, proactive as they can be uh, in working with Zach Shell, who's our director of vendor management. That guy mm -hmm. has a hard job with the company, I think, right now um, of, of, you know, he gets a list multiple times a week from every vendor. Hey, we're out of this. Hey, there's a lead time on this. Hey, this is back ordered. Hey, we got this back in stock. We have this instead of this. And he's constantly sending emails to the sales team and builders trying to keep folks informed. So, I mean, if, if we're going to have an issue with your brick, you will hear from your builder or from your sales. Right. Um, the good news is we can't just switch to whatever color we want. Like legally, we can't do that. We've agreed in our agreement with you that if something like that, a specific color you have chosen isn't available, you must reselect. Like we can't just pick whatever the difference would be like on, um, radiant barrier decking. Okay. So for instance, we don't tell you if we're going to use L Louisiana Pacific text shield or Georgia Pacific Plitanium. We don't get brand specific on that. Mm -hmm. That way it leaves us some options to say, Hey, wherever we can get radiant barrier decking, as long as it blocks 97% of the sun's radiant heat as advertised, we're cleared hot. We don't need permission to use one or the other. I hope that makes sense. But anything that you've okay. selected personally and made a selection on that you have to sign off on. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Peggy is asking if Tilson allows installation of dish or other internet prior to closing from home and needs access right away after closing. So actually you can, um, yeah, we, you, you can have that done. We do ask you obviously to coordinate with the builder, with the building superintendent, because we don't want contractors in there on top of other contractors necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and the only caveat is they can't touch anything our contractors have done and vice versa. So we don't want them messing with any of our electrical boxes, um, that kind of stuff. But yeah, if you want to have dish or somebody come in there or, or any kind of low voltage company come in and run, you know, any kind of low voltage wiring, which is what that's considered. You can have that done. We typically have, there's a little bit of a lull sometimes now more than others, uh, when, when we're done with what we call roughing in the home. So when we're done running all the electrical wiring throughout, the plumbing throughout and the um, HVAC, we allow folks to come in, like the inspections have to happen. Okay, so no matter where we're building in Texas, even if there aren't inspections locally, we're getting the home inspected by a license. We're gonna pause. Inspected, so a lot of times the builder will say, that's a good time for you to have someone come in and, and run that kind of low voltage stuff. Great question. Okay. Great. Um, j Bo is saying he's looking forward to seeing the Casita model um, and asking if a Casita can be built later or do we have to build it when the primary home is built? Uh, great question. But yeah, we can we can probably build it later. Uh, we haven't mm -hmm. had anyone do that yet. Um, but but yeah, we, we can most likely do that. Okay, perfect. It's just a little house. That's what Casita yeah. means. Little house. Gerana is asking, has anyone screened in a cathedral extended porch? Our canyon is going to have the extended cathedral porch and was just wondering if that is possible. It is possible. 
That's um, a lot of screen though. A lot of screening. Um, and and you probably have to have support beams across yeah. it to keep the yeah. screen from collapsing. So I'm not sure how that would look. Well, and screen um, only, they only make it in such long lengths, right? So it may right. be the biggest you can get is eight feet, which that's probably even a, six might be the biggest, but eight feet. Let's say you can get eight foot tall roll of screen. So yeah, like you're saying, you're going to have to have something to, to attach it to and a way to keep it tight, to get it tight. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm already picturing like the first bird, you know, where they're going to fly through. They're going to fly through like not at eye level. Way up high where you can't get to it. 19 feet in the air. So um, yeah. anything can be done, um, but I'd want to, I'd want to definitely get with our vendor that we get the screening material from and get a better answer for you on, on maybe some examples they have on cathedral. I'm sure they have some kind of cathedral solution. Yeah. She she agrees with us that she thinks it'd be a lot, but she just really hates bugs. I, I agree. I really I really hate bugs I'm too. You. I'm with you. I just want to make sure we weren't going to be destroying your beautiful view. Um, and then yeah, screen repair is going to be going to be tough. <laughs> all righty, um, that is really all the questions I see. Brilliant. Okay, so Don, what what is this top secret, guys? You can still ask questions. We'll still answer them. So, but we're giving you a warning. We're yes. We're, <laughs> this is last call for questions. So for questions um, you snuck something on there. You snuck something we, on the internet. We did. So we had talked a couple weeks ago. People were asking about new plans, and we were talking about the Live Oak. Um, and at the time, we thought it was going to be until September, but um, it's actually live on the website now, guys. Um, so you can you can go to the website when the live is over. Um, and yeah. you say goodbye to us, um, go over to the website and you can see the Live Oak, the interactive floor plans and all of the elevations um, and the interactive elevations are live now. Um, so brand brand new plan, you heard it here first. There it is. So come here to learn about when new stuff's gonna happen. I think you yes. can push the custom options live like right before we I did. Moved. Like right before, that's why we were we started the teensy spit late because I wanted to get it get it out there for you guys. Always working so hard for y'all to make sure you have everything you need. <laughs> Okay. And then we're also the video that clips that we shared today is actually we do have that as one one long video and we will push that live to our website tomorrow morning um, so that you guys can can see it then. So we'll we'll do a post and let you know when it's live. Share it. Show your friends. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is the craftsmanship page. I used to yes. Know about that. Yes, we do have. Let me actually pull that up so yeah, I can show you guys. This is a really I'm, cool thing that Don. I'm I was pretty at proud a, of this. I was at a marketing summit last week that Don was not at, and they pulled this up as like, this is what builders should be doing for people, for customers. So Don is cutting edge for you guys. Check this out. All right. So this is the new craftsman section, um, quality construction section of the website. Um, so you come in here and there's a little introductory video um, from, from somebody you should recognize. Uh, but then you can also click into every section and it goes um, starting with foundation through every phase of construction um, on your home, ending with the third party inspections. And when you click into um, the specific part of construction, there's a video um, where Eric's taking you behind the scenes, showing you everything that's going on. Uh, with our home. Uh, if you want to read the transcript, you can click that button um, or you can click read more, which just has more information about our process um, during that phase of construction. And then when you scroll all the way down, um, there are going to be additional resources. So additional blog posts, videos, um, different things that we've put together um, about that phase of construction so that you can, you can see more. So there you go. There you go. And see, Look, and you can do this with like B or C class talent. Okay. You don't even have to have anybody <laughs> good. You just good information. Okay. Right. Like this you is, have somebody who's excited to be there. This yeah. should give everyone hope. This should give everyone hope. So, yeah. So, thank you for doing that. It's awesome, guys. Go there. It's a ton of information. If, for those of you who like to watch mm -hmm. video, it's good for video. If you like to read, it's good for reading. If you like to share it and post it and let folks know do it, you can do that too. So, that's, yep. um, that's what's cool about it. So, anyway. yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of that. It's, a, it's a lot of information. So, super excited. Um, and then we've got a couple more questions. Um, Peggy says she loves to play with our website. Um, and thank you for the videos. Thank you for watching us. Yeah. 
Um, Martina is asking when we're going to post the new model in San Marcos to the site. So it is actually with drafting for approval. Um, so I hope to have that live for you guys in the next couple of weeks, but we'll, we'll announce it here, um, when it is ready, but everything is, is ready for review. So I'll be checking on that after that. She's also asking what replaced the Hillsboro, um, the entire Waxahachie sales office yeah. replaced the Hillsboro. So that is, um, one of the few model homes in the history of the company since it was in the neighborhood, we actually sold it. Uh, so someone lives in it now. Um, it's actually a house, but yes, the whole uh, Waxahachie location replaced that. So both the Fayetteville and the Whitney, um, as well as the beautiful design center. Cool. Uh, let's see. We had somebody who says he was coming in late. Um, oh. He's building a two-story San Gabriel and like to see an elevation pick. Ooh. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm sure that we will... I'm sure drafting will draw up something yeah, for you. Good news. Sure. You're, gonna, you're gonna be seeing one because yeah. you have to draw yours. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we'll definitely see it then. Um, let's see. Daniel is actually asking a financing question. Um, how far back do they look at W-2 information? Okay. Well, Daniel, there may be a little confusion there because they don't creditors don't typically look at W-2 information. Now, well, I guess the lender might look at the lender, uh, yeah. Typically the, the mortgage lender. Yeah, mortgage lenders typically looking at two years or your past two years of W-2 if that's what you're documenting as your income. Now, sometimes they will if there's if there's maybe, oh, I've only been W-2 for a year and prior to that I was 1099, then a lot of times what they'll say, well, let us see your tax returns from those years and let us see your W-2 and maybe uh, your last, they also ask for like your last 30 days pay stubs um, and they can kind of use that to you know, project what your income will be if you're going to remain a W-2 income employee. But two years is kind of the, the golden rule on there, um, on W-2 information. If we're talking about credit report history, like then that's a different story and that's a way further back um, than, than two years. That can follow you for a long, long time. Yes. It does follow you for a long, long time. Not can. It, it does. does. It does. Yeah. Great question. Um, let's see. Frank is saying, I'm sold on the professionalism of everything I've seen. I managed, inspected commercial construction for 20 years, and it feels like you guys are really trying to do the jobs right. We are. Thank you we for are. that. We try very hard, Frank. We are humans, but we do try hard, yes. and we will make it right, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, j -Bo says he cheated, and he already checked out the Live Oak online. Uh, says it looks great. <laughs> Well, first rule of marketing. Well, I mean, I'm not, I don't do marketing. Don does, but you don't tell somebody something's out there until you've tested it and made sure it's working. So <laughs> <laughs> we try that. not to, at least. <laughs> Learn that, but yeah, they go sneak around awesome. the website. Good for him. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and then Rosemary is asking, at what stage of building do you reprocess finance paperwork? Rosemary, it's typically done about sixty days out prior to closing. Um, but they, they have been known to check things right, right up until closing as well, yeah. uh, verifying employment, um, that kind of thing. But they do, they typically will, will just kind of repool credit, um, and that kind of thing, uh, ask for, they'll ask for updated pay stubs. A lot of times they'll ask for updated bank statements, um, mm -hmm. about 60, 30 to 60 days prior to closing, but typically 60. Yeah. Um, and I've heard now a lot of them are like re-verifying that employment information, like 72 um so great great questions great questions okay. all right that is all the questions i see wonderful well uh, i think we can save this other stuff till next time perhaps it's been a little over an hour <laughs> for folks we don't or, or do you want to ask if people are interested in this thing um you you can ask because well, we now to. everybody's curious unless you want to bring them back next week so we can ask them that but we're going to ask you something next week <laughs> come back next week Come back next week. We have we have a question for y'all, and it may or may not have anything to do with things. Okay, we have some requests that were. Uh, Dawn is introverting about it. I don't I don't introvert, so she's thinking about it. I'm I'm doing whatever she tells me to do. So um, come back next week. We'd like your input on something. Might even do some. Right. I don't know. I don't know how we do this, but. Thank y'all for doing this. Thank you for coming and joining us. Obviously, we have all of our regular places you can find us. We have our 11 design centers working on the 12th um, mm -hmm. that, that are open seven days a week. We have model homes there. Um, we've got uh, the Facebook page. We've got an Instagram page. You can interact with us on all socials. We have a fantastic YouTube channel with tons and tons and tons of content. Uh, we've got <laughs> Jay is he's always speaking around your name. Um, we also uh, have a website. Of course, award-winning website, award-winning website that uh, is constantly being updated, constantly innovating. That has tons mm -hmm. of great for you guys. It's open twenty-four-seven, and uh, we have a the best online sales team on the planet. 
Uh, in there. We gotta bring them on this. I know, I should. I should. Y'all probably seen bomb bomb videos from them. Uh, you've gotten video emails from our online salespeople. Um, if you haven't, please let us know because you should. And then, um, yeah, obviously we're out there getting after it. We are working really hard to get these homes built. We are uh, working through the current market conditions, just like you are. Um, I know if you're walking into a, a, a restaurant, if you're walking into a particularly mom and pop places, right? But everywhere, guy, you want to do a dry cleaner, it's a Jiffy Lube, all these places, bear with them. Okay. Like it's mm -hmm. hard. It's hard right now getting people to show up. So um, just know that all industries are feeling that. So we are grateful for those that are showing up. Bear with us. We are going to get your homes built. You know, we, we always have done right by our customers. We've been doing this for almost 90 years. Um, mm -hmm. So there are obvious market conditions that we're dealing with. There's labor shortages, there's supply chain disruptions, there's all this stuff going on. But all you need to know is that Tilson is going to be here through the long haul. You don't have to worry about us not showing up. It may be longer than we want it to be. It will be longer than you want it to be, but it is going to happen. So hang in there with us. And we genuinely want to make you part of the Tilson family. We'll see y'all later. Bye everybody.